Before you even say it, I know what you're gonna say, okay? I'm in your head. Husky, why bother with a video on Tetris? Drop the shapes, clear the lines, boom, it's Tetris. Video over. Come here. You think you know Tetris? You think you know Tetris? Yeah, because I'm gonna show you some Tetris. Okay, look, Tetris feels like it's been around since the dawn of time, right? I mean, if you open up a Bible and go a few chapters back before all that Jesus shit, I guarantee you, you're gonna find some proverbs and some prophecies and some passages about falling line pieces or some shit. I don't know. Tetris has been on everything ever. Literally. I mean, arcades, NES, Super NES, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, N64, GameCube, PS1, PS2, PS3, PS4, PS5, cell phone, Kindle, e-cigarette, toilet, grandma, everything. How many other franchises can say they've been on everything, eh? Not many. Listen, there's two ways that we can play with boxes, right? We could just... Oh! 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 But you know, oh, I think I'd rather just show you some of these Tetris games. Oh, God. All right, so let's set a baseline. I know, I know, it's Tetris, right? Everyone knows Tetris, but we can't talk about Tetris without talking about Tetris. And right up front, I know that they're called Tetraminos or however you pronounce it, but moving forward throughout the rest of this video, I'm just gonna call them blocks because it's gonna be easier for me talking to you because I just... Tetramino block. Okay? Deal with it. Shapes made of four colored blocks like a T or a box come down like falling bricks. You can place them in rows, but wait. I think I'm quoting that old ass YouTube video. Anyway, you stack the blocks in order to clear lines, which increases your level and your score. Need I say more? And that's Tetris. An easy game to play, a hard game to master, simple, pure, fun. They even made a version on the Game Boy. And between these two games, the major variances are... Music... Lack of color... It's about, it's about it, really. So yeah, Musics 1 and 3 are different between the NES and Game Boy versions, but other than that, it's the same game, so let's move on. Following Nintendo's success with Tetris comes Tetris 2. Now, Tetris 2 came out on the NES, but I have the Super Nintendo version, so we're gonna play that. Tetris 2 takes on a different style of block dropping, having the players clear out existing nodes by connecting three of a similar color, as opposed to the traditional clearing of lines. So this is more of a puzzle game than it is a Tetris game. And yes, I do believe that a Tetris game is different than a puzzle game, but something about this is off to me. This game has some really colorful, imaginative backgrounds, and the themes aren't really what I remember growing up. I always remembered this game to have a more hieroglyphic theme, if that makes sense. Oh god, we're two games in, I'm already losing my freaking mind. Well, no, it turns out I'm not losing my mind yet. Uh, the versions I had growing up were the NES version and the Game Boy version. Yeah, that's more of what I remember. And honestly, I think the hieroglyphic themes work way better with Tetris 2. These versions are identical to each other. The music, the mechanics, the flow of the game, everything. These aren't great Tetris games, but they're pretty fun games to waste some time on if you're looking for something. I'll be honest, I don't know how I got my hands on the SNES version. But if you are looking to play Tetris 2, my best advice for you, avoid the SNES version. Play the NES and the Game Boy versions, they're much better. But hey, speaking of games on the Game Boy, here's a Tetris game that was exclusive to the Game Boy. Tetris Blast. Now, I actually only just recently found out about this one, so I don't have a lot of history with it growing up, but judging by the name of the game, this one's gonna be a blast. Yeah. Ugh, okay, fine, I'll leave. God damn it. Right out of the gate, this game has some awesome music. You just have to appreciate a good soundtrack. So we're back into a typical Tetris, but these blocks have like warts or zits or something. Okay, I'm not very good at writing jokes, but let's just clear a line and... Well, nothing happened. What, is this game bugged or something? Let's try again. Jesus Christ! Oh, they're bombs! Oh, I just figured it out, dude. My brain finally had a smart. It's another puzzle game that you clear with bombs. This game's freaking awesome. It's such a fun way to play a puzzle game. Bombs build up as you set lines. Putting enough bombs near each other makes bigger bombs. And there's a number of levels for you to blast your way through. Oh yeah, Tetris Blast is worth playing. In fact, forget what I said about two, get Tetris Blast instead.
All right, so what's next? Oh! All right, well, I wanted to save the best for last, but you know what? Now's a good time as any to talk about this brand new game. Brand spanking new. Hot off the presses. Doesn't get newer than this. It's so new, it's got the word new in the title. The new Tetris, which was released in 1999. Yeah, not so new anymore now, is it? Ah, it's such a pet peeve of mine when they put new in the title. They did the same shit with new Super Mario Brothers. And it's not new anymore. It's, it's the old Tetris now. This is the old Tetris. It's over 20 years old. This thing can drink. Legally. I'm stalling for time. But anyway, what makes this game so special to me? Well, the new Tetris is a return to form as your traditional Tetris experience. This time, you can see a significant number of blocks in the future. You can hold blocks that you aren't quite ready to use and in with a new mechanic, the ability to create these large bonus blocks. These blocks come in silver and gold. They give you a times two or a times three line multiplier, respectively. You can make them by building a perfect four by four square using different blocks for a silver or all the same for a gold. So kind of like, uh... This, 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 no, not that. Oh, come on, you're not even trying now. Believe it or not, this game has a goal, an ultimate challenge for you to fill. The lines you clear all go towards seven different wonders of the Tetris world. That's right, the lines you clear don't just get thrown out, it all gets recycled into building intricate and amazing structures. From the Mayans to the Greeks, the Egyptians, the Celts, the Africans, the Japanese, and finally, the Russians. In total, to complete all of these wondrous things, you only need to clear the modest sum of 500,000 lines. I'm sorry, 500 fucking thousand? Oh, hold on. Let's let's do some math here, okay? Let's say let's say you could consistently get 20 lines a minute. 20 lines a minute would be 420 uninterrupted hours. Nice number. Did that by accident. I when I wrote the script, complete accident. But still, Jesus. I don't think we're going to be seeing a 100% run at GDQ anytime soon, do you? Well, Anyway, overreaction aside, this game holds a lot of sentimental value to me. It was the first game I got with my N64 back when it was new, and it's a game that my mom and I used to play all the time. And I can prove that because a child me wrote mom on the label. This is real. This actually happened. So, there you go. Okay. Oh! There's another N64 game in here. Oh, you know what? I wonder what this one could be. Because Tetris 64 was only released in Japan, but then there was the Disney's Magical Tetris Challenge, or whatever it was called, but that one saw an international release. Think. Tetris Sphere? A game about spheres in my Tetris world? I don't think so. Next. Let's see what we got here. No! Come on. Ugh. Okay, fine. We'll play Tetrisphere. I realize a lot of my reactions here are a little melodramatic, but Tetrisphere is actually not that bad. Out of all the Tetris games we're talking about today, Tetrisphere is probably the most unusual. Once again, this is a puzzle-oriented game, where you clear blocks away by matching similar blocks together. Yes, even though the game takes place all over a sphere, the classic Tetris blocks all make an appearance. Your goal here, once again, isn't to clear lines. No, what you actually need to do is break your way into the chewy center of each delicious sphere to progress to the next level. Each block you place needs to clear at least a couple of other blocks Blocks, otherwise you will lose a life. Three mistakes and it's game over. Overall, this isn't the worst game in the Tetris lineup. Like I said, it's actually pretty fun. A lot of people actually remember this one pretty fondly. And I can honestly see why. There's something satisfying about causing a massive chain reaction around the sphere. And to top it off, Tetrisphere has a pretty fun multiplayer mode for you and a friend. Or the computer. If you can't find a friend to come play Tetrisphere with you in the year 2023. Or Romeo, Romeo. Okay, well, this isn't the weirder shape that we're gonna see Tetris in today. <laughs> but more on that later. Let's see, ooh, here we go. This is cool. So if you guys have played the more recent Tetris Effect and Tetris Effect Connected, then you're already familiar with the way that everything changes based on whatever world you're in. Well, the precursor to that, Tetris Worlds, came out on the PS2, Xbox, but I have the GameCube version, so let's play it. This is a very styled, very metallic version of Tetris. Something I really like about this is that when you drop a piece, all of the pieces around it...
Lady, please, you're gonna have to settle down with the dirty talk. I mean, I am married. I, uh, what, what was I saying? I, I had a thought, and then the lady... Rank up? Oh yeah, okay, ranks and levels are different. From what I understand is that your level is relative to how well you're doing in that current game, while your rank is relative to how well you're doing overall in the world. Look, I could have done more research on it, but what can I say? I'm ridiculously lazy. <laughs> Each world in Tetris Worlds has a different game mode. The first world, Deneb, has traditional Tetris. Duh. Myra has square Tetris, which is the same thing as the new Tetris, with the multiplier blocks. Aludra, the water world, has cascade Tetris, where loose blocks will continue falling if there's enough room for them to, well, cascade. A terrace has sticky Tetris. Oh. Oh, it's so sticky. Oh. Oh. Sticky Tetris has the cascade mechanics, but the pieces of the same color will stick together, so that can stop three pieces from falling. Also, the blocks are all broken up into random chunks of whatever to add another layer of complexity to this game mode. Talitha has Hotline Tetris, where you have to clear lines at certain heights, or hotlines, to get the lines and progress through the game. It also has cascade mechanics, which can absolutely screw you up if you're trying to build high to score big. And finally, oh, ooh, you... Yun Unukal High? Unukal Unukal High? What, what, it has fusion it has fusion Tetris. Difficulty four of four. Yeah, the name alone accounts for three of those difficulty points. Anyway, fusion Tetris throws these little single blocks at you. The idea is that you add these fusion blocks to the fusion core to fuse lines. In a way, it kind of reminds me of Tetris Blast. Honestly, all of the game modes in Tetris Worlds are well worth your time. They're fun, challenging, engaging. Tetris, to back. <sighs> but man, those voice lines. I don't know who gave the okay for that, but god, they're just creepy as hell. We're getting close to the end here, and since we're coming off of a game that has a lot of different game modes, how about I show you another game that has a bunch of different game modes? Uh, Tetris Worlds. I'm, I'm kidding. I'm... Uh, Tetris DS. Goddamn sticky Tetris. The hell? <laughs> Damn it. Tetris DS also features six different game modes. Standard is the traditional experience. Duh. Catch features a Metroid theme where you control a little block with the Tetris pieces falling at you. The goal is to catch them without letting any pieces drop or colliding with any of the Metroid jars. Oh god, no! 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 Creating a block that's 4x4 or larger will create a greater explosion. Lose too many pieces or hit too many Metroids and it's game over. Mission mode has you playing with Link oh boy. to clear a variety of missions, such as clear X number of lines or use this piece to clear a line and more. It's a surprisingly fun way to play Tetris. Puzzle mode sets you up in Yoshi's Cookie with a pre-assigned set of blocks to clear. Instead of dropping them yourself though, you're given a number of blocks that you choose the order and orientation of to automatically drop into place. Your goal is to clear all of the blocks so that Mario can get back to work making cookies. Dude, I should make some cookies. Touch will get you in trouble with the law if done without consent. But in Tetris DS, you use the stylus to touch, slide, and spin the blocks to break down a tower to free the caged person up at the top. Well, you can rotate the blocks up until levels 4 and 5, where they take that away from you, for some reason. And finally, we have push mode with Donkey Kong. This is strictly a versus Tetris mode, where both you and Donkey Kong try to push each other out of the grid by clearing Tetris lines. It's like a reverse tug of war, or the Overwatch game mode push, if it was any good. But hey, at least push isn't cancelled. Right, Blizzard? At least the PvP's intact. Right, Blizzard? Otherwise, it plays just like regular Tetris. Oh, sorry, I'm just engrossed in this right now. We should move on. Honestly, I'm surprised that recent Tetris games don't try to embellish those game modes. I mean, they're so fun, there's so much to do. I mean, between Tetris Worlds and Tetris DS, we have a seriously strong lineup of Tetris games to keep everything feeling fresh and fun. Well, that's the end of the video. That's all the Tetris games I have to show you. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate you guys being here. We covered a lot of games, and uh, boy, shut up! We're not done yet! Listen to the box! We still got some stuff in here! Hey, what do I have in here? Boom! Tetris 4D! That's right, dude! 3D is such an outdated, boring concept. Why Why worry about Tetris 3D? I mean, we had Tetrisphere, which was kind of 3D. 
We're just gonna jump straight to 40, okay? Trust me on this. Honestly, the fourth dimension, that one extra dimension is just enough to bring back the passion and love for new cutting edge video game technology. You ever been to any of those 4D movie theaters? They're kind of hard to come by, but basically what it is, is they make you wear 3D glasses so you can see the imagery in 3D. But when something on the screen happens, like if I were to get excited and spit in your general direction, or like something like a, like a, something blows by your face or whatever, you would get sprayed in the face with mist or feel a fan or something to actually make you feel like you're there in the movie. That's the whole point of 4D. I'm so excited about this because that that's kick ass. I can't, I, I'm so excited. I have completely forgotten what I wrote on the script and I'm keeping this in. We're gonna get to experience this from the comfort of our own homes, okay? Are you excited? I'm excited. Okay, something you may be asking yourself is why have I never heard of Tetris 4D until today? And the reason for that is because this is a Japanese only title. It never saw an international release. So, if you've been around the classic gaming review YouTubers for any length of time, you know that Japanese only means one of two things. I'm surprised that worked. One of two things, either A, it's an unbelievable hidden gem that's a crime that we never got to play, or two, and the more likely option, is this is gonna be a fucking piece of dog shit. Okay, well I'm not even gonna try to channel my inner AVGN. Let's just play the game. Okay, two modes, classic and battle. Well, we know classic, but what's battle? It's probably a bunch of unique versus modes or something. Okay, so we can choose multiple players. Uh, let's just choose two for now. I don't think I could really handle more than one CPU my first time into this game. Game level, uh, normal's fine. Oh no. It's literally just a multiplayer mode. All right, well, let's go back. Wait, there's no way to go back. Well, time to reset. Okay, well, I guess let's check out the classic mode. Level select, again, normal should be fine for now. BGM select, well, you can't preview the music, so uh, zero, Karinka, impact, AK, silence. You know, out of all those quirky names, silence sounds mysterious and cool. Let's check that one out. Oh, oh. Oh, si silence literally, si they, they literally meant silence. Dude, they just don't make video game music like this anymore. I understand the want to have an option to turn the music off, but like, why not just have the option simply be off instead of silence? I mean, yeah, it's my fault. I picked silence, but think of it like this. The song Sound of Silence isn't just three minutes and six seconds of nothing. Well, I've been dancing around this for a little too long. What we find ourselves with here is a very watered down version of Tetris. It's actually closer to the NES version rather than anything else a little more recent. Hard drops, gone. List of what's next, gone. Hold pieces, gone. Shadows, well, still here, but come on. The majority of the quality of life improvements to the game simply gone? And what exactly is 4D about this? It's barely 3D. Let's check the Tetris wiki. Yeah, Tetris has a wiki. Hell, it's 2023. Everything's got a wiki. Uh... Tetris 4D is a game for the Sega Dreamcast console. It has single player and multiplayer modes. That's it? That's all it has to tell us about Tetris 4D? <sighs> God. I think we arguably just found the worst Tetris game. I'm not even kidding. I'm sure there's a bunch of bad ones that we're not gonna talk about today. Oh my God, but for the time this came out, there really was no reason for it to be this bad, dude. All right, well, we're almost done here, but let's just take a moment, breathe in, breathe out, breathe in. And while we're breathing in, we're gonna breathe out. Not at the same time, that's impossible. I'm gonna give you a couple of seconds here because there's another game in here that I wanna show you. And I want you to guess what Tetris game it's gonna be, okay? Total shot in the dark, you got a couple of seconds. Don't think about it too hard, just guess, all right? I'm gonna give you three, two, one, boom. Tetris, the card game. Yes, they actually turned Tetris into a playable card game for two to four players. And it's fucking awesome. The object of the game is to be the first player to complete 10 lines by filling any number of horizontal rows on a card. Traditional Tetris logic. 
Setup starts by shuffling the deck and dealing 10 cards to each player, which will be set up in two rows of five. Other players seeing these cards don't matter, you'll be flipping them over as you clear lines to keep track of how many lines you clear. Say that three times fast. With your score rows all situated, every player will then draw a card to keep in their hand. This is a card to hide from the other players. Each player then takes turns playing Tetris, starting with the player on the left of the dealer. You start your turn by drawing a single card. The matrix that shows up on the next card is the field that you'll be playing on. You want to place a Tetris block somewhere on that card to clear as many lines as possible. You do so by discarding the card you played and explaining where you drop the block. Once you've discarded, you'll flip over the number of scorecards based on how many lines you've cleared. What happens if you can't clear a line? Well, you still have to discard a card, but if you were not able to clear a line, then you lose a point, and you'll need to return one of your scorecards to its unscored position. You may notice that you've drawn some special cards. Some cards are similar to Uno. The rotate card changes the direction of play, and the drop two and drop four cards force an opponent to lose two or four scored cards in their scored rows. Bombs also force all opponents to lose a scored line, and power-up cards let you swap any unscored block in your opponent's score row with itself. So, for example, if I wanted this T piece and I had a power-up card, I could take the revealed T piece and leave my power-up in its place. Play continues until someone clears all 10 lines and then the game's over. I honestly don't know how they made Tetris into a card game and how it works so well. This is a really great game to bring to your next game night with your friends and family, so definitely pick this one up. I can't recommend it enough. It's so fun. Well, this is just a handful of all the Tetris games that I've seen or played or whatever at any point, but it's not even close to all of them. I mean, look at this list. Look at all these games! Games as early as the Amstrad CPC, Commodore 64, the Amiga, Apple II, Atari ST, the MSX2, Famicom, Mega Drive, PC, MS-DOS, Philips CDI, Virtual Boy, Sega Saturn, Ericsson T28, The Wonderswan, The Pokemon Mini, Xbox 360 Arcade, The Wii, Facebook, Cell Phones, Grandma, Amazon Fire TV, The Freaking Ouya, and again, that's not even the full list! Man, that is a lot of games. But I still have one more that I want to show you. And in fact, this is the game that inspired this entire video. When we play this game, you'll want to throw all of your block placing tendencies, mem muscle memory and all that, just take it and throw it out the window, because that's not going to help you here. This is Pyramid. Pyramid is an unlicensed NES game. It's a Tetris-like, but instead of using blocks, it uses triangles. Pyramid. Oh shit. Dude, I'm really bad at this game. Even when I'm trying my hardest, I just can't help but leave pits. Okay, uh, so the music's just not it. it it's kind of weird. It's like a remix of that stereotypical Egyptian music, which I get. It was clearly the theme here, but oh bro, oh my god, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't play this one. <sighs> anyway, there's apparently bombs that I can use, but I can't figure out how to do it. I mean, there's not that many buttons to choose from here. There's A, there's B, there's Start, there's Select, there's the D-pad, but no matter what combination of buttons I hit, I just can't get the bombs to work. Wait, what? Oh. Up and B. It's up and B. Well, yeah, I mean, what else could it be? Like I said, there's not a lot of buttons on this thing. Dude, I can't even clear a line. It's definitely a skill issue here, but I just, I can't wrap my head around the game. Well, that's enough of that. It turns out triangles don't work well for me in a Tetris-like game. I'll leave the triangles to Legend of Zelda. But yeah, even with this small curated pile of Tetris games, you can really see how each game developed on its predecessor, how they continued to develop and improve the quality of life from the previous games, all while keeping the spirit of the original game intact. And that's awesome. If you've made it this far without ever playing a Tetris game, now's the time. Play one, play them all, play casually, play competitively, but no matter what, They made a fucking Tetris movie?!